Hello there. Have you seen the first three episodes of HBO's new series and Game of Thrones spin-off, House of the Dragon? What are your thoughts so far? We feel it will be every bit as intriguing as Game of Thrones. However, that is not all we are going to be talking about in this video. This video will also explore a recurring and not-so-palatable theme that runs through the two series. Some people might ask, what is House of the Dragon all about? Yes, many people do not know about the show. Not everyone is a movie aficionado or a pop culture fan. This is why we will briefly delve into an introduction. House of the Dragon is an HBO owned and produced TV series. It is a spin-off of the widely popular and critically acclaimed Game of Thrones. Shortly after the last episode of Game of Thrones ended in May 2019, HBO announced a spin-off. The spin-off would be about events that occurred some 200 years before the events in Game of Thrones. It chronicles the beginning and end of the Targaryen family, including the Targaryen Civil War or War of Succession. It is the history of Westeros as compiled by the maesters of Robert Baratheon's era. It was also later announced that the spin-off would focus on the Targaryen family. The new was greeted with excitement by fans of Game of Thrones, so on the 21st of August, after about three years of planning and production, House of the Dragon premiered. According to HBO, 9.99 million people watched the first episode on the night it premiered. This figure rose to 10.2 million US viewers the day the second episode was released. Although this is still early days, House of the Dragon has generally gotten good reviews. The plot is based on George R. R. Martin's fantasy novel, Fire and Blood, just as Game of Thrones is based on another George R. R. Martin novel, Song of Ice and Fire. Up next, who are the stars of this show? So, who are the actors we would be seeing throughout Season 1? Casting began in July 2020, and by October of that year, we already knew the name of the actor who would play King Viserys Targaryen, and it was English actor Paddy Considine who got the role. Matt Smith plays Daemon Targaryen, the rogue prince. Millie Alcock takes on the role of Rhaenyra Targaryen, the oldest child and daughter of Viserys, while Emma Darcy plays the adult Rhaenyra. Emily Carey plays teenage Alicent Hightower, daughter of Sir Otto Hightower, Rhaenyra's friend and eventually the second wife wife of Viserys after the death of his first wife. The adult Alicent is played by Olivia Cook. Rhys Ifans gets the role of Sir Otto Hightower, Hand of the King to Viserys and Daemon's political rival. Steve Toussaint plays Lord Corlys Valerian, Viserys's master of ships, head of the Valerian family, and wealthiest man in Westeros. Eve Best plays Princess Rhaenys Targaryen, Lord Corlys's wife and Viserys's cousin, popularly called the Queen That Never Was. Sir Criston Cole, a knight selected into the King's Guard by Rhaenyra and eventually becomes the commander, is played by Fabian Frank. Sonoya Mizuno appears as Myceria, Prince Damon's mistress and confidant. That is all about the starring actors. We'd be seeing other recurring members of the cast throughout season one, but we wouldn't want to bore you with their names. And now to the main point of this video. What dark past of Game of Thrones does House of the Dragon dredge up? If you cast your mind back to Game of Thrones, you would realize that children were thrust into real life quite early. Boys picked up the sword while they were still kids, while girls were married off as soon as they could have kids. In fact, the children's ages in the book were a few years lower than in the series. For instance, Daenerys's age increased from 13 to 16, Sansa from 11 to 13, Arya from 9 to 11, Rob from 14 to 17, Jon Snow from 14 to 16. The children's ages in the series were increased because of some of the experiences they went through, especially in the case of Daenerys and Sansa, who faced sexual violence as teenagers. These changes were made in consideration of the audience, as it would be bad form to show mere children experiencing the things that children in Game of Thrones experienced. However, this action by the creators of Game of Thrones did not change much when considered closely. It just made the audience a bit more comfortable about seeing minors go through all that. In the next segment, we will discuss how House of the Dragon works around this issue of children being thrust into adult responsibilities early. So how does House of the Dragon deal or not deal with this issue? The creators of House of the Dragon did not increase the ages of the children in the story. Instead, they were kinder to the children. They removed scenes that would have shown the children having sex, being abused, or other things. For example, when King Viserys starts looking for a new wife, Lord Corlys offers his 12-year-old daughter Lady Laena, and although Viserys courts Laena, this is only portrayed as a discussion between them. Viserys is also visibly disturbed at the prospect of marrying a 12-year-old. Eventually, King Viserys settles on a bride at the end of Episode 2. The bride is none other than 15-year-old Alicent Hightower, his daughter's friend. We never see Alicent as a child bride, because Episode 3 fast-forwards to the second birthday of Prince Aegon Targaryen, who is the first child from Alicent's marriage to King Viserys. At this time, we can presume that Alicent is already 18 years old. We can can reasonably say that House of the Dragon would stick to this precedent set in the first few episodes and remove scenes that show children performing adult activities. It is now left for us to wonder and debate which handling of the children issue is better, Game of Thrones or House of Dragons. Up next, why can't the children be exempted from experiencing certain things even if they are not shown? This is because, although the Game of Thrones franchise is in the fantasy genre, it alludes to a point in the history of Europe when children had to grow up early and child marriage was the norm. At that time, marital education was important for 
serve both the commoners and nobles. There were no professional soldiers as we have today. Every man was a soldier. So, to ensure that every man got into adulthood as a capable soldier, he learned how to fight from his childhood. It is just like how children have to go to school to become valuable members of society by the time they clock the legal adult age. In related news, does this House of the Dragon scene finally tell us what Drogon did with Daenerys' body? In the opening episode of House of the Dragon, we see Queen Emma, the first wife of King Viserys, being laid to rest through cremation. The cremation is done by a dragon after Rhaenerys utters the all-too-familiar word Dracarys, which means dragon fire. This is obviously how the Targaryens laid their loved ones to rest. This scene gives us an insight into what might have happened after Drogon, one of Daenerys' dragons, picked up her body and flew away. At that time, some people suggested that Drogon might have eaten her. This suggestion was refuted by David Benioff, one of the creators of the series. It is possible Drogon took Daenerys' body somewhere private and cremated it. That sounds slightly better than eating her, or does it? Finally, Matt Smith and Millie Alcock on Daemon and Rhaenyra's ambiguous relationship in House of the Dragon. The first episode of House of the Dragon made it obvious that the show will return to the uncertainty that made Game of Thrones so compelling, and occasionally even slightly unsettling. Consider the first significant exchange between Millie Alcock's Princess Rhaenyra and Matt Smith's Prince Daemon Targaryen. The king's younger brother and his sole daughter are related as uncle and niece. Although neither character will admit it, they are rivals and undesirable candidates to succeed King Viserys Targaryen and sit on the Iron Throne. However, it is not rivals that we see hugging beneath the shadow of the Iron Throne, as Rhaenyra eagerly races to greet her favorite relative there. Additionally, it doesn't necessarily appear that the two are an uncle and niece, since they trade high Valerian jabs before exchanging presents, and Daemon drapes his brother's daughter with a Valerian steel necklace. The Targaryens are well known for keeping things within the family. Aegon the Conqueror conquered Westeros with his two actual sister wives, Visenya and Rhaenys Targaryen. Their descendants, Daenerys Targaryen and Jon Snow, were also aunt and nephew in the original series. While we inquire about the relationship between Rhaenyra and Daemon, Matt Smith admits Daemon's motivations aren't entirely good, but they might not be as evil as what has gone before in Game of Thrones. Look, a lot of it is about his brother, Smith says. It's not just about Rhaenyra. I think everything to do with Rhaenyra is related back to somehow getting his brother's attention. Millie Alcock recognizes that there may be some attraction, whether real or manipulated. Me and Matt wanted to leave a sense of ambiguity in that scene and kind of leave the door a bit half open, Alcock explains. But ultimately, she's a young woman and whatever feelings that she's feeling, she doesn't fully know how to grasp them. She doesn't fully comprehend her attraction towards Damon, whether it's platonic or sexual or romantic. She's unaware. It's fair to say that House of the Dragon promises to be interesting. We would like to hear your opinion on the issue of children participating in adult activities. Does it spoil this series a bit for you? Or you don't really mind? Or you didn't even notice? Leave your answers in the comment section.